all the same, the Jesuits established vibrant churches, vibrant uh, dioceses in places like Mexico and Peru and Bolivia and Chile and the Philippines, uh, even in the Congo. In fact, this is interesting. The, the Portuguese who arrived in Africa in the 1400s, by 1491, uh, there was a Congolese king. His name was King Muvimba Nzinga. And he actually became a Christian having experienced the Christian mission of the Portuguese, just showing you that there was something about them that he found attractive. It was their message, uh, not any desire for gold or profit or power. In fact, the Portuguese uh, political people and the people that were there for money, they stuck to the coast because that's where they could make money. Uh, Congo, on the other hand, was further inland. So the people that went inland to the Congo, there was not much to gain in terms of finances by going there. It was strictly a risky gospel mission. And by the year 1516, it was said of another Congolese Christian king. His name was King Afonso. It was said that better than we, he knows the prophets and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He knows all the lives of the saints and all things regarding our mother, the Holy Church. It was something that would actually, that would be this knowledge and his devotion to sincere faith that would actually cause him to be declared the defender of the faith, a title that had been given to Henry VIII, a rather despicable English king, but given also to this rather noble African king who embraced the gospel message. All of this happening in the heart of Africa due to the works of these early missionaries.